One, airplanes don't constantly course correct down. So, if the Earth was a globe and you were an airplane, you know, flying like this, you would constantly have to push your nose down or else you would fly off the edge. And when you're in an airplane, you don't, like, feel that happening. Plus, one guy, a guy brought a level onto an airplane and it, like, stayed totally consistent the whole time, which means that the Earth is flat. Two, there are no actual pictures of the world. You may think you've seen some, but they're all photoshopped by NASA. So, boom, boom. These are two pictures of the Earth. As you can see, they look way different. Uh, the people who photoshopped them shows, like, totally different approaches. In one of them, North America is huge, and in the other one, it's way smaller. So you can see these are obviously not the same thing. They're not taking a picture of something that's actually real. It's all Photoshop. Three, round earthers say that the world is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, which is absurd. If that were really true, then every time you jumped, you'd go flying through the westward wall. You'd, like, break through all the brick walls, and you'd land all battered and bruised. But that doesn't happen. You can jump any time. Also, whenever you flew a kite, as soon as you let it go, it would just rip through your hands and fly away westward. It's absurd. It doesn't happen. The world is flat. Four, look at the horizon. Like, look at it. Five, Eratosthenes. You may have heard of this experiment. Eratosthenes was a Greek guy who lived forever ago that took uh, two sticks in different cities and at the exact same time measured their shadows. And from that, he was able to calculate the circumference of the Earth. So right here I have a perfect one-to-one -one simulation of Eratosthenes' experiment. As you can see, uh, my desk is not round, but it's producing the same effect, where the shadows are pointing in different directions, or they're different lengths. So this shows that Eratosthenes' experiment is absolutely consistent with the flat Earth, which is the reality. And that is why the sun is 3,000 miles high and 27 miles in diameter. Six. This is the truth, and if you don't agree with it, you're a closed-minded idiot. Marcus, I'll see you tomorrow.